What's up everybody, Tony here with High Tech Check and today we're going to be taking a look at LSIFE's M.2 Portable Hard Disk Enclosure. Now you can't get this off Amazon right now, I will, will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to pick it up yourself. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys. So first we're going to go ahead and see what you get inside the box, we'll go over some specs, and then we're going to go ahead and do some speed tests with my Western Digital Black SN750 NVMe, it is a 1 terabyte. So here we see some of the specs on the back here. As you can see, it does work with USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, and it can do up to 10 gigabits per second. It's also backwards compatible with USB 3.1, 3.0, 2.0, and 1.1. It supports four different size NVMEs, the 2230, 2242, 2260, and the 2280 of the M.2 SSD. It also supports M key, B plus M key as well, and supports M.2, NVMe, PCIe, and SATA. And you can also use this with Windows, Mac, Android, Linux, pretty much anything you want. So that's very versatile. So let's go and see what you get inside the box. Okay, so here's our enclosure. Get our manuals. I'm not sure what this is, but we will check that out. Okay, so here we get a couple different cables. We get USB Type-C and USB Type-C to USB Type-A in case you don't have uh, the USB Type-C. And in case you were wondering, there are no thermal pads included in this pouch. It was just a thank you card. And then here is the MVME enclosure itself. Looks pretty nice. It does have an aluminum body to it. This does have some plastic right here. And as you can see, we have our USB Type-C connection right here. So it is pretty light. Again, the aluminum doesn't make it very heavy, but it doesn't feel cheap like it's going to fall apart. Again, this is the only plastic piece in here. That is the tray. And it's also a toolless design, so you can put in your NVMe without using any tools. All you need to do is pull this out of the uh, cover here and then put in your, your NVMe. So I'll start by pushing up through the bottom here just to kind of release a little bit, and then we'll just pull it out the rest of the way. Okay, so here as you can see we have our connection for the NVMe and then these little clips here for the various sizes of your NVMe's. Now what I would probably recommend is just kind of push these down a little bit so they don't bend your NVMe when you push it in. And then the little connection back here, if you use it, I would just kind of bend it back just, just to so slightly because uh, it is very tight to put your NVMe in and I don't feel like breaking it because uh, it's pretty expensive. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and put this in here. We'll kind of work it in. It's a pretty snug fit. And then we'll just go ahead and push the back part of this down. Okay, so then it clicked into place and it is being held in place uh, by this little plastic clip there. Again, like I said, uh, one thing to keep in mind is these little plastic tabs here. The ones that are not being used, make sure you push them uh, kind of down and out of the way because you don't want them putting pressure on the NVMe. And then once you're going to go ahead and put it into the tray, you need to make sure that these little plastic fins don't catch on the enclosure or else it won't go in. So it's a little balancing act. But once it's all in place, we'll go ahead and push it back into the tray here. And then we'll go ahead and connect the USB Type-C and we'll plug it into my iMac and we'll see what kind of speeds we can get. Now you can put up to a two terabyte NVMe in here and keep in mind, depending on which cable you use and also dependent on the type of NVMe you use, you might get different speeds than I am here. This NVMe is capable of doing much more than just 10 gigabits per second, but that's all this enclosure can handle. But if you, can, if you have one that's much lower than 10 gigabits per second, uh, it's not gonna boost it up to 10 gigabits. You're gonna be able to do only what the NVMe is capable of. Okay, so I do have the NVMe enclosure connected to my iMac here. As you can see, it is coming up as the NVMe 1T. That's what I've named my SSD. I also have the Blackmagic speed disk test to show you exactly what speeds I'm getting. And I also have the activity monitor up to show you uh, what the data reads and writes are recording from the system itself. So let's go ahead and get started here. Just to show you, I do have the 
drive selected, which is the NVMe 1T. I do have a whole bunch of information already on the NVMe, and you'll see what speeds we get with that. So go ahead and start up the speed test. So we're getting 926 megabytes for write. And then for the first try, about 883 for reads. So again, 920-ish for write. And there we go into the nines for the read as well. So as you can see, we're getting both uh, read and write speeds that are pretty much exactly the same. And that's very respectable uh, for this NVMe enclosure. So now, like I said before, uh, depending on what type of connection you're using, you you might get these speeds or slower. The USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable is going to give you the most speed possible. And this is connected directly up to my IMAX Thunderbolt 3 port. So it does work with Thunderbolt 3 as well. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do it is I'm going to connect it to the USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable and show you what the max speeds are for that. Okay, so I've reconnected the enclosure back up to my iMac. This time we're using USB Type-C to USB Type-A. This is connected to a USB 3.0 connection. So we'll see what kind of speeds we get with this. So we're getting about 410 for write. And then a little bit more for the read. Let's see what happens on the second pass. 410. And then for the reads, about, about the same. So as you can see, if we look down here at the system monitor, it'll show our reads and our writes. So it's about to do a write. As you can see, 431 megabytes. So there's a, a slight discrepancy between the actual system monitor and the disk speed test, but I think it's pretty negligible. So as you can see with the USB 3.0, you get less than half the speeds you would using USB Type-C 3.2. This speed is also comparable to what you'd probably get from a SATA 3 a connection using a regular SSD. So the NVMe is definitely going to be your best choice for speed if you need it. And as you can see, you're pretty much going to get about a 900-ish uh, for the read and the write while using this enclosure. Heat dissipation is also pretty good on this enclosure after doing these speed tests. It's warm, definitely not super hot. You can easily handle it. So you know that the heat dissipation is working really well with that aluminum enclosure. So as you could see from the video, the speeds that they are claiming you can get with this enclosure are pretty close. It's not exactly going to be the 10 gigabits per second, but it is pretty close. And also, like I said before, the heat dissipation is works really well on this enclosure again it was it was warm to the touch it wasn't super hot so you know that it is uh, dissipating the heat from the NVMe pretty well again this does work on Android the only thing is if you want to use this between your Mac and your Android phone if you happen to have one you want to make sure that you have this formatted in the XFAT format because if you have this formatted for your Mac it's not going to work uh, between both devices. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind. Again, like I said before, this is super light even with the NVMe in it. If you put it in your pocket, you probably won't even realize that it is there. So you can easily use it on the go, you know, with your laptop, MacBook, or again, even your uh, mobile phone device. So again, I will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to pick this up yourself. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.